Hello and welcome to Lafroy Live 2014. Well, we were in the United States of America last time and now we're in the beautiful countryside of Sweden. Yes, we're, in fact, we're on an island which is part of an archipelago which is just off from Stockholm. Thankfully, when it comes to Swedish pronunciation, I have someone who can help me. Vicky Stevens from Lafroy is with me. Vicky, welcome along. Isn't it great? It's absolutely fantastic, Murray. It's fantastic to be back in Sweden. Uh, I've got the great privilege of working with Lafroy and coming to Sweden quite a few times in a year, uh, but it never ceases to amaze me that when I come back to Sweden, it's always, it's always welcoming. Now, tell me exactly where we are, because I said we're on an archipelago, on an island, but, but I know no more than that, really. We are. We're at a restaurant called uh, Rukeri at Fjerde Holmen, Holmena. Rukeri at Fjerde Holmena, uh, which is Swedish for smokery. And in Sweden, they've got a real affinity with smoky food, which is why it goes really well with Lefroig. Uh, the, the palate here is suited to smoky food, and whiskey experts in Sweden are, are, are huge, uh, the number of, a number of them. And uh, so whiskey is the number one spirit here in Sweden, and undoubtedly Lefroig is the number one whiskey. Ah, well, the number one whiskey and smoky food, and we're in Sweden, Mamma Mia. We just cannot go wrong. We really can't. Well, I think that we should go inside and go and meet not only our panel, but also go and meet that wonderful audience that's inside. Let's make our way in. Thank you. So here we are, live. Live. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all so much, thank you. Sir, good evening. Looking forward to the food? Very much, but uh, the other part here is definitely something that we look for more. The whiskey? Yes. The whiskey, all right. Well, enjoy the whiskey, enjoy the food in just a moment. Welcome along, if you're watching, wherever you're watching, in whichever time zone you're watching, we have thousands of people right around the planet watching this programme right now. Some of them are actually taking part in parties themselves and some of them are enjoying whiskies just as we are here. So, wherever you happen to be, thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's a real pleasure to have you with us and uh, we hope that you're going to stay here with us right now for the next 40, 45 minutes. We'll be answering some of your questions. We'll be giving you a name shout wherever we possibly can. We'll even take some photographs from you at your Lefroy party wherever it happens to be. Before we go any further though, I think we should meet our illustrious panel that we've got alongside here. I'm delighted to say that we've got on the panel Lefroig's uh, distillery manager, known to many, and he's been on all of these Lefroig lives before, and most of you in the audience know him. And that, of course, is John Campbell. Welcome, John. Hi, Marty. Hi. <laughs> We're going to be hearing a lot from John tonight, plenty to talk about tonight. We'll also be hearing from the vice chairman of the Swedish Whiskey Association, and that is Peter Borg. Peter. Now, for many within the country of Sweden, well, our female member of the panel here needs no introduction, but we're going to try anyway for the benefit of everyone else. Uh, comedian, TV host, celebrity, superstar of Sweden, I'm delighted <laughs> to say that Noor El Rafai is with us. Noor, welcome Thank along. And he's one of the biggest whiskey bloggers there is around, certainly in Sweden, and he set up ilovewhiskey.eu. S-E. Uh, check it out, please. Go on to it and, and, and read some of those blogs there. I'm delighted to say we've got Harkin Dahlberg with us. Thank you. Well, I just want to say those in uh, Montana, those in California and those in Canada already watching the show and already sending us messages and good wishes right here in Sweden. Gives you some idea how global we really are. Uh, and we've had a, a photograph that's come in already, and it's a photograph from uh, Philadelphia. We'll talk about it with John in just a minute. But those who are viewing at home right now on their computer, wherever it might be, will be able to see that picture. Uh, there's four of them in the picture uh, at a bar, and uh, they can all see that at home right now. And we'll get to see it in the, uh, in the studio a little bit later on. On. But uh, welcome, Philadelphia. Good to have you with us as well. And uh, we'll talk to John about that in just a moment. Now, as I said, we're on an archipelago. We're on an island just off from Stockholm. I think before we start, we should at least have a look at the beautiful city of Stockholm.
Isn't Stockholm stunning? It really is. Uh, you should really come here sometime and you'll get some of this hospitality that we're getting here now, which is quite tremendous. It really is. Now, coming up, more about this wonderful smokery that we're in and some amazing food, which I know that our diners here are dying to get stuck into, and we will very shortly. Uh, so we'll be doing that. We'll be tasting the likes of smoked elk and smoked reindeer and our very own Swedish chef. Yes, we have a Swedish chef here, ladies and gentlemen. Our very own Swedish chef. I'm waiting for him to go hurdy gurdy but he's not going to. <laughs> But he may, he may. We'll find out in just a moment. We also have uh, one of the leading uh, of Stockholm's cocktail bartenders with us as well. We're delighted. And uh, uh, the audience here sampled a, a fabulous cocktail earlier on, which was made with Lefroig. And we'll get to taste that and meet Madeleine in a little while. Madeleine, hi. I suppose what we should do is let you know that we've had thousands, and I mean thousands of questions already. Thousands of questions have come in uh, from all around the world, which the panel will hope to get through a few of them. If we don't get through your question, we will be answering that in the next week, and you'll be able to see that on the website as well. The best questions as well will also win a prize, and we'll let you know about those on the website in the next week. So that's coming up. Now, if you have got photographs like the one we saw of Philadelphia, you might want to share that with us. The best way to do is to tweet it to us, and if you go to the hashtag, which is... Uh, the Freud Live, you'll find us, you can send the photograph, we'll try and get as many photos up during the program as we possibly can, so that's a great way of doing that. Time to get down to some work, ladies and gentlemen, that's whiskey tasting, if you can call that work. Uh, John, let's start with the first one of all, which is uh, the Lefroy Select. Now, those in the audience here have the Lefroy Select as well, so uh, what do you make of Lefroy Select, first of all? John, tell us about it. Well, it's a new brand uh, we've just launched this year, Murray, it's not in all markets yet, so don't worry, especially for the folks here in Sweden, could be coming next year. Uh, it's mainly down in, in Australia just now and in some other kind of countries coming into the US, maybe some European countries as well. Uh, what we try to do, we try to create a flavour profile with this one, it's called Select. Uh, and we were really trying to innovate by the traditions of the past. Mm. It's kind of something Lefroy always does. So we did it with Quarter Cask in the past. We're doing it with Select this time. A hundred years ago, Ian Hunter, he didn't have the consistency of cask that he liked. So what he had to do, he had to blend different casks together to get the correct flavour that he wanted for his Lefroy. So what we did on, he would have mixed five or six different types of Lefroy together. We've tried to recreate that. There's PX sherry casks in this one. There's Oloroso sherry casks in this one. There's straight American oak in this one. There's first fill bourbons in this one as well. And uh, lots of different flavours, lots of different combinations. Uh, so hopefully people will find this one quite interesting as well when they try it. OK, well, everyone's going to try that. Before, before we uh, get some more trying on that, just a question that's come in. And it's one question from George Jones in, a, in the United States at the moment. Thank you, George, for your question. He wants to know, what type of glass do you recommend for tasting whiskey in? Uh, George, I don't mind what glass you taste it in as long as it's Lefroy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but seriously, you do get specialised glasses as well. So uh, Glencairn Glass in Scotland, uh, they'll do that. And there's also the Riddell Glass in the mm. US. They, that's probably more famous for wine, but they do good whiskey glasses as well. OK, it's all right. So job. there's your answer. Thank you very much indeed for that. Now, to, to learn more about Select, can we welcome back, please, uh, Vicky Stevens? Vicky, come up and join us up here for a moment. Vicky, come on in. Uh, now, Vicky, uh, tell us a little bit more about Select, because Select I I is something really special. It's not something we see every day, is it? No, it is very special. And the whole story behind this kind of started about a year ago, uh, just over a year ago. And at the distillery, we were tasked with the opportunity to come up with a new brand for the Lefroy Grange. And so we came up with six different recipes using some of the concepts that Ian Hunter had gone through and using some of the different maturation styles that John had talked about. Uh, we then got these six different recipes and we blind tasted it on uh, Friends of Lefroy that had come to the distillery during the time of the festival that we hold there in May. So it was actually over about a two week period, we took different blind tastings and we took the information that they gave us, not in terms of just the scoring that they gave the whiskey, but also in terms of the talk that they gave us when they were tasting the whiskey. And this was the winner. Basically, this is what they chose. Friends of Lefroy is so important to what we do and it's important that we get the right kind of flavour profile that you guys are going to drink and that's what we came up with. But not only did they choose the liquid, Murray, they also actually chose the name as well. So we asked them for feedback on what to call this new expression and so Lefroy Select it was. So. Smart. So it seems like the, uh, the, the Friends of Lefroy have a great deal of control. Now, we've got, a, we've got a question in, actually, that says how many Friends of Lefroy are there out there and how many nationalities are there? There's a big 
big question for you. It's a lot. <laughs> We've got over 630,000 friends of Lefroig and across about 190 different countries. It's a, it's a huge big deal. Uh, it's great to be back in Sweden because the highest concentration per capita is actually in Sweden. And we estimate, <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going on the current population figures, it works out about half a percent of the drinking age population in Sweden is actually a friend of Lefroig. So they, they do love their whiskey, <laughs> especially Lefroig. But uh, yeah, and what never ceases to amaze me is how much this captures people's imaginations, this whiskey, because they come to Isla to visit this distillery where they're buying the whiskey that they're enjoying at home. And of course, as a friend of Lefroig, you're given one square foot of land that surrounds the water source at the distillery. So they make pilgrimage to this bit of land they own. And last year, from the nationalities we could count at the distillery, we had 72 different nationalities come to plant their little flag on their little square foot of Isla. So, good work, yeah. good answer. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. Give no a round of applause for us. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much for joining us. We should really give our audience here a chance to uh, taste the select roundabout now, because that is uh, there's something you should do. So do enjoy that. I'm going to give it a little try myself. Uh, whilst we're doing that, a shout out actually to the Bergen Tasting Room. You know the Bergen Tasting Room, John? Yeah. <laughs> Becky's department. She does. She does Norway, but I'm absolutely positive they'll be having. Good fun, just like we had here too. Uh -huh. Well, they are. Well, they've just sent us a message. Best wishes from there, which is great. So, which is good. Now, pictures are coming in all the time. We've got more pictures coming in. There's another one up on the screens right now uh, from another group having a good time tonight and sending their tweet in to us. Thank you very much indeed. And if you're at home and you're watching us and you wish to tweet us, then it is uh, hashtag uh, Lefroy Live, and then you can just send whatever you want down to us in the way of pictures within reason. Thank you. Um, but do send them in to us. Uh, well, we tasted our first one, which is the Select. I'm going to go on to our second whiskey pretty much straight away. Uh, and, uh, and this one's a, 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 a wonderful whiskey that comes out every year. John can explain more about this. And this is the, uh, the, uh, the car chase. Now, let's talk about the car chase and, uh, and, and what you make of it. <laughs> well, I, I chose it, so it's got to be good. <laughs> well, it's down, it's it's down all to my you. Fault, it's yeah. all your fault, uh, John. So, no, uh, what we try and do every year with car chase is produce a different style of Lefroig that people won't have seen before. So we are doing a lot of experiments behind the scenes all the time, trying to push the boundaries with this liquid. Uh, the great thing about Lefroig is that it's such a fantastic liquid you're starting off with as a new spirit. Uh, and there's such varied boundaries for it as well. So what we've done the last three years, I think, we've had a base of an eight-year-old Lefroig, first fill bourbons. We've then double matured it in different casks. If you can remember, last year's was pink with the portwood finish. Mm -hmm. This year's we've double matured in Amontillado sherry casks, uh, hogsheads, and these have been seasoned for two years in Spain. We'll then take them back to the distillery, and we've double matured it for one year in these casks. So this is basically a nine-year-old liquid. Lots of great flavours coming through from that. Amontillado sherry is quite sweet, quite dry. You're going to get a lot of floral coming through in this one. And for me, this is... Uh, it's not available in Sweden yet, just in case you're wondering as well. It should be, hopefully, around December, this should be available in System Balagat stores. And it, I think it matches that time of year really, really well. This car is 2014. Uh, there's a lot of cinnamon coming through in this one. There's a lot of cloves. There's a lot of, what, what would we call it? Is it glue? Glug. <laughs> so the Swedish folk will know what I'm talking about okay. there. Uh, but it's just, it's a Christmas spirit. It'd be like glue wine in Germany mm. or like uh, what we would have around the Christmas period at home in the mm. UK as well. So it, it's very Christmassy feeling this one. And this is the place that invented Christmas, this area, this part of the world. So okay. what a better place to do it. Let's get down the panels. John, thank you for explaining that with us. I know our audience here are tasting that as they go. And I've just tasted it. It, it tastes amazing to me. Uh, Peter, what are you making of that one? That's, uh, that's their Sweden? Yeah, this is Sweden, and uh, I think this is what Swedes would like. Uh, it's like a Spanish fruit garden uh, combined with Christmas. Yeah, perfect. I would like to have this one when I play a uh, birdie on the Macri right. golf course, golf your course, course you know. Yep. Yeah, that yep. would be perfect. That's going to be that's <laughs> going to be in your hip flask when you play golf. Though, it? <laughs> okay, fine, absolutely. <laughs> no, let's come down to you. No, no, no. Are you, are you a whiskey drinker by trade? Are you, are you yeah, someone that likes I drink your whiskey? I love whiskey. Yeah, I, and I love whiskey. I'm not an expert. I just I love whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the right place tonight, aren't and you? And I'm famous. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that's two good reasons why yeah. you're here. That's two good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I, what do you think of that? First of all, as you were enjoying it, yeah, I it? think it's it's fruity, but it's uh, it's taste uh, it tastes chilly. 
the f and the chocolate chip. We have the chocolate here. We put chili in, mm -hmm. so it's like sweet and spicy at the same time. And it's yeah, it's very good. Sweet and spicy. Is that a description of yourself? Do you think? <laughs> uh, yeah, you could say that. Yeah, oh, come of on. course. Come on, that yeah, was a, that yeah, was a yeah, good sure. description. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm, okay. I'm sweet and spicy. You're going to accept that one, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hakan, is that you now? How do you how do you feel about that? Um, I really like the, the gentle smoke and the fruitness that comes along with it. And, and I think Swedes are going to love it, actually. Yeah. OK. There's a thumbs up all around there. That's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. what you want to hear, really, isn't it? Yep, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now, earlier on, we had a photograph of, of Philadelphia, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we didn't, we didn't get, come back to that. I just want to come back to that first, John. You know the people in that photo, Ooh, don't I you? I do, do, I do. I've spent uh, a, few, a few good nights with the folk in that photo. So. Uh, Simon, the master ambassador, was in the middle with Stephen, uh, who's the what we call a protector of the peat. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's he's based in uh, Pittsburgh, but that is actually in Philadelphia in a bar called Time. So Tim and his team run Time. Got that out right. Well done. Enough. <laughs> and the, I've spent many an evening in Time having some good fun as well. So uh, here's the guys in Philly. Hi. So Tim and the team in Time. There you go. <laughs> All Slanger, the very best yeah. to you. It's last yep. to you, wherever you are there. And uh, we've got uh, another photo coming up right now. Some more people sending their photos in. So if you're watching at home, you'll now be seeing a photograph of others that are tweeting theirs in. So thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, Jeff's question to you. Jeff House sends a question. He said, any plans to mature Lefroy in ex fino sherry casks? Uh, yes. Well, we I'd say we are. It's like it's lots of different experiments going on at the distillery because we're always looking... For the next Karchus, we're usually two or three years ahead in planning with Karchus. Uh, we did a, at the tasting at the Whiskey Festival, my tasting was cast strength whiskies this year, and we did two, uh, uh, we did a Fino cask, and mm. that was actually the most popular. So maybe, uh, what was the guy's name? Jeff. Uh, Jeff. 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 You might see a Fino Karchus coming maybe 2017, 2018. Okay, we'll look forward to that. Uh, there's a question that I'm, I'm going to ask or I'm going to mention, but I'm not going to let you answer it yet because we may come to it a little bit later. It came from someone you know called uh, Bent, uh, Bent Olufsen. Oh, yes, yeah, final bench. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, they're all sending Very their well, questions yeah. in, I can tell you. Uh, the last time, he said, the last time I saw a 15-year-old on a liquor store shelf was back in the 80s, and I bought the last two. Do you ever plan bringing one back? Bent, wait and see. We may talk about it later in the programme. You're just going to have to wait for that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, we're not going to discuss that now. Maybe we'll discuss that a little bit later on. Uh, but what you've got down there, we were just talking about the Cartier's before that. Yep. Now, that is, is something that, that every year is, if you like, the present from Lefroy, would you say, to the Friends of Lefroy? Yeah, it's a special bottling for the Friends. Uh, we do it once a year, I say, as launched at the festival. And we just do different things. It's, you'll see behind me, bottle there. Mm -hmm. Karchus, it's always in a clear bottle, so you can see the colour of the liquid. The last two digits of the alcohol will indicate the year that it's bottled, so it's 51.4% alcohol. Yep. Uh, next year, 515 uh, And we usually work in two or three years ahead with with the help of the friends and so when you're traveling around the place like i have i've been in sweden for the last five days been around some great whiskey societies and i've had a fantastic welcome here so thanks to these guys as well uh, but you pick up pieces of information and you get to understand what the culture likes and so hopefully cartridges of the future as well okay well we look forward to all of that now we're talking about friends of lefroy we have a lot of friends of lefroy right here right now in our makeshift studio right here in the smokery. So we're going to go for a little walk around and just have a chat on the way. Um, the one person that I wanted to talk to, I'm going to, I'm going to come around this side for you, if you come around, it's burnt, isn't it? Yes. Uh, twist yourself around just for a second, sir. Um, there are lots that I know that you know about whiskey. Uh, before I do anything else, uh, what did you think of the Cartier? So you, you're happy with that one? Yes, I think it is the best in the last five years of Cartier, okay, as so I feel it. Good. I, I do enjoy the sherry and the peat together. Mm -hmm. I feel they marry very, very good in this whiskey. OK, well, that's good news, and thumbs up for the, for the guys there. Now, I also know that for about the last 20 years, you've got a black book on whiskey, haven't you? Yeah, but I have that at home. <laughs> <laughs> you started this a long time ago, didn't you? So, so you, have a, you have a complete black book, a diary of all the whiskeys that you tasted, is that right? No, in the beginning, but not nowadays. Yeah. 
I'm you, not writing so much now. You're just enjoying it now? Yeah, much more. All right. Well, listen, it's great to meet you. Yeah. Thanks very much indeed for joining Thank us, Bert. Thank you very much. Bert joining us live on the programme here. We did say earlier on about cocktails, and indeed we had cocktails uh, right at the start of the show here in the studio. But what I'm going to do now is move around to our cocktail maker. Madeline, good to have you with us. Hi, thank you. OK, we're shaking up a cocktail. Everyone tried this in the studio earlier on. We're going to find out what's in it in just a second. It doesn't take long to do. Tell us, Madeline, what's in the cocktail? Uh, so this is basically a take on a very classic sour using uh, Lafroy Select and Maker's Mark as the spirit. Um, since I wanted to use something Nordic, this is Buckthorn, which are in season now. It's a very sour and acidic berry mm -hmm. packed with vitamin C's, uh, honey as a sweetener and a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. Is there a challenge to using uh, spirits such as Lafroy? Because they are very strong spirits, aren't they, in terms of flavor and, and smokiness? Yes. I wouldn't say it's a challenge. I mean, depending on what kind of bartender you are and what you like, I mean, I like challenges, so this was, this was fun. Well, uh, you'll be glad to know that where Maker's Mark comes from, Kentucky are watching this right now. So, hi, Kentucky. Hi, Kentucky. Uh, hello, <laughs> County Down. Hello, Brazil. And hello, LA. They're all watching us right at this moment. So, <laughs> great to have you joining us as well. Oh, um, the, yeah. the, the taste of it, we ought to taste it, didn't we? Uh, we're going to go cheers. 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 And uh, have a little sample of. Mm. Oh, that's, a, that, that's still got the sharpness, but it's, it's, it's almost like yeah. a warmer, isn't it? It's, it's, it's got yeah. everything going for it. Glad you like it. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for making the Thank cocktails tonight. Me. It's great to have you here. Madeleine, everybody. No, great job. <laughs> great job. There's the cocktails, and those cocktails are good. What I'm going to do is tiptoe into the kitchen, because along with uh, all of this fabulous uh, whiskey that we've got along here from Lefroig, we've also got John the chef. Hey, John, how are you doing? Hello. Fine. Uh, uh, you've been working hard all day, I know, John, uh, but when you've been doing all this work here, uh, you've been producing some amazing food, which is on the, on the tables at the moment. Just talk us through what we've got here. We have some hot smoked salmon on a fresh potato, some... Uh, Swedish typical Swedish uh, skagen with uh, bleak roux and uh, some marinated salmon with uh, la frog mm -hmm. and uh, some uh, reindeer with uh, uh, shit. <laughs> you've got to think what it is, haven't you? But it, <laughs> we've got reindeer. We've got smoked reindeer down there. Is that a, is that a cheese there you've got there? It's, it's the cheese with the La Frog, yes. OK, because somebody actually uh, did write in a question to us and did say that what they wanted was a cheese that they could match with La Frog. So which cheese would you recommend? Uh, cheddar. Cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese every time. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's that simple. Um, I wanted to talk about this huge bowl that we've got in front of us because the food is amazing, and I'm just going to leave the food there. But the, this is wood chip, isn't it? Yes. For 25 kilos of uh, this wood chip, I have used 20 bottles of La Frog. So 20 bottles of La Frog goes into 25 kilos of wood chip. You pour that in? Yeah. But, you, but you, I cry. Yeah. <laughs> I would cry as well if I was pouring 20 bottles of, of whiskey into wood chip there. It's got... Um, I, you won't be able to do this, but the, the smell of that wood chip is fantastic. And then you use that in the smoker? Yeah. I smoked the salmon for three hours with its... its ships. Yeah. yeah, and it's great. It's fantastic. Really, it is. Listen, John, thank you for all your hard work today. You've done a great job. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks to John, our chef, ladies and gentlemen, doing a great job for us. Thank you to John. And from John, we come wait, back out of the kitchen. It's warm in that kitchen, I can tell you, because we've got more expressions to do. So we'll leave the cocktail, tempting though it is right there. We'll make our way back. Uh, to those people who are sending their tweets in at the moment, please keep them coming in. Thank you very much indeed for that. And uh, we've also got uh, lots and lots of people around the world, as I say, who are watching the show. And it's time for us, whilst people are enjoying their food uh, that, uh, that John is putting on there, the panel up here don't get any food, do they? You're looking all hungry there, John. I know all these guys too, so they're making me hungry. They're <laughs> laughing at me and pointing. <laughs> OK, well, well, we'll get back to some of them in just a little while. But I think we should get on. We've got two more expressions to go. We've got lots more questions coming up as well. So let's move on to our, our next expression. And uh, the third expression of, the, of those that we've got here is the Nordic 12-year-old expression. So, so, John, just take us through this. Why a Nordic 12-year-old? <laughs> because this, these, the, the Nordics in general are have got a very strong uh, affinity with Laphroaig. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the number one single malt in these countries, so they have good taste. Yep. Uh, we try and reward them for that good taste, and we did uh, a, a vintage 1989 for them last year, and then we've produced this 12-year-old uh, for the Nordics this year. So what it is, this 12-year-old, uh, 
it's going to be it's just just about available, I think, uh, coming towards the end of the year again. And what it is is ten-year-old in refill sherry casks, double matured in two butts, double matured into four first fill Oloroso hogsheads. Wow! So the last two years of its life. So it has a different kind of colour. It's it's not the full Oloroso sherry because of these. 10 years in refills for mm -hmm. the first 10 years, but you will get some of the inferences, but you do get a lot of the Lafroy flavoured profiles from the new spirit. Coming okay, through now well. not everyone has got this, have they? No, so if you are, this is for the Nordics, unfortunately, so if you are around the world, yep. this is the guy that we'll be doing it with. So, uh, sorry you won't be tasting this, you just have to rely on us that it's good, but this is very good too, so if you're tasting with 10 year old, slanger. So if 10-year-old or the 12-year-old, if you're tasting the Nord Nordic one, which is what you're doing right here. Let's yep. go down the panel and let's find out what, uh, what they make of this and we'll get some more questions coming in. Peter, down to you. 12-year-old Nordic, Lefroig, happy with that? I like it. It's, um, it's not as fruity as, as the previous one, uh, a little bit less alcohol, uh, maybe a little bit stickier. Uh, I think uh, it's a good uh, everyday whiskey. This could be nice at the moose hunt after a day's work in the woods, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about it because you're the vice chairman of the Swedish Whiskey Association. Yeah. A lot of your members will be watching tonight. Won't yeah. They? Yeah. Tell me about the association a bit. Yeah, I'm proud to be, be part of, of uh, the team who's running the association here. Uh, we are uh, representing more than 200 clubs in uh, Sweden. Uh, I think this is uh, something very... I think it's unique a little bit to have this kind of uh, federation or associations that is umbrelling uh, a lot of clubs. We are 8,000 members right. and um, we have a, a lot of nice actions and activities uh, for, for, uh, uh, to, to promote uh, actually good whiskey uh, drinking and, and, and to uh, bring people like John to Sweden. I mean, we have clubs up in Kiruna, we have clubs down in south of Sweden. We have a lot of people. A lot of people whiskey. following you mm. and following the whiskey yeah. that you're drinking as well. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. OK, M moving, moving on down. No, the 12-year-old, uh, the, the yeah. uh, different completely to the last one you tried. It's just a, a different, different whiskey altogether. Yeah, it, it? it smells more alcohol, though it's less alcohol than the first one. Uh -huh. and, um, but I put some water in it. It doesn't taste that. It, the, the smell is not the same mm -hmm. as the taste. But I put some water in it, and the smoke really came out. When I put uh, some water, we call it a wolf for sheep's clothing quite a lot, where the smell doesn't actually feel like how it tastes. So, it, it, a lot of the times, Lafroig, the nose and the taste are very, very different, and yeah. it just opens up completely in your mouth. Yeah. yeah, and it's more smoky when you put water in it, I yes. think, but it, mm -hmm. I think it's sweet. I, I think it tastes sweet. It's well. interesting that, that water, water in whiskey, it's something that I do as well, and it, it, it changes the flavour completely, doesn't it? There's always a question about water, the ice, neat. The first sip is always without water, but then I pour some in. Mm -hmm. And the last slip, sip is with... <laughs> it's wi whiskey with whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way, it's a good way. <laughs> OK, uh, let's go to Harkin on the end there. Harkin, uh, again, you, you just, you've, got, you've got a post to lean against there. Yeah, so yeah, you're, you're it's quite nice, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but, but talk about the whiskey. Um, I like it because I relate to the f old 15 years. Yes. And yeah. I, I think it quite like it. Uh, okay. But I have to try it, of course. Don't. Well, but but um, yeah. I'd like the, the the sweet sweetness and and, and the the light uh, smokiness. Mm. I love whiskey. Dot yeah. uh, se. Let's just talk about that for a moment. And um, why do you love whiskey? And when did you start loving whiskey? Yeah, um, early nineties. Um, I live up north in Sweden, and um, about four years ago, I th thought that. Um, I have to do something about it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started the blog on Facebook, actually, uh, and it was quite um, popular, mm -hmm. uh, and and um, and so on. The, it's um, it's nice to to uh, to get to know all these nice people who love whiskey <laughs> <laughs> around Sweden and, of course, around all all yeah. the world. Yeah. world. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Nice.
Yeah. Excellent. Well, listen, um, there are people can just log on and read your blogs time yeah. after time on those. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, excellent. Thank you very much for that. We're coming back with more expressions in a moment, but uh, I can tell you more photos are coming in. There's a, a, a photo that's up on the screens at the moment from Scotland, so thank you very much indeed to them. <laughs> yeah, it might be people you know again, John, I'm sure it is. Uh, but also a shout-out to New York that have just messaged us. Hawaii. 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 Um, very early. Wa Oahu to those yep. in Hawaii right now. Good morning. And, uh, yes, good morning to you. <laughs> and uh, also in Turkey as well. There are people watching us in Turkey who are enjoying it as well. So uh, people here, there and everywhere enjoying it. We've got lots of questions coming in as well. And I'm going to try and get through some of these questions for you um, as, as quickly as we can. Uh, we have a question that came in. A couple have been fed to me. Uh, how long, this is from Ken, how long do you have the peat smoke going into the grain John, and yep. is there a critical time for the taste? Do you limit the amount of... I've been up there and I've seen the peat smoke coming up yep. through the floorboards in the smoking house. Yep, and for, for the guys at Lefroy, this is a, probably a private joke, it just depends who's on shift. <laughs> oh, <right>. OK. <laughs> but equal, we try... It, it's roughly about 17 hours uh, peating. The, th the thing is not so much about the time we peat, it's about mm -hmm. how we peat, and it's a cold smoke we do that makes... That's the thing that makes Lefroy unique. We're the only floor maltings or commercial maltings combined together that cold smoke. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the reason why we taste different. All right. OK. And Steph wanted to know, uh, but if we're talking about shout-outs here, there and everywhere to all corners of the world. What's the furthest location from Isla that you think someone has partaken in a glass of Lefroy? Have you got people that, that tell yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I've, got, I've, got, I've probably got an answer to it as well. Okay. There, was, uh, oh, there was these guys, uh, they're the the grandsons of people who went on the first Shackleton expedition. Uh -huh. uh, two of them came to Lefroy, uh, Wilgau and Henry Adams, and that was in March 2012. So they they basically used Lefroy 10-year-old cast strength as a wee treat at the end of the day if they made their miles to get them to the South Pole. So probably the South Pole's furthest away. The South Pole. Yeah, that is where yep. you can go. OK, <laughs> let's move on to our final expression. I, I, I think you're enjoying these, and you can come back and revisit them again. But we've got one last expression for you. The fourth expression is, is one that I know a lot of people have been looking forward to. And uh, it, was, it was voted in by the Friends of Lefroy. So again, the power of, uh, of your customers are dictating which one you should do, which is an 18-year-old Lefroy. Yeah, no, I think it's the power of the customers is hugely important to Lefroy. It shapes the brand. Keeps keeps me doing what I need to be doing as well. Uh -huh. So it keeps they they add the the power off the brand as well. Uh, they chose eighteen year old as the final whiskey for this tasting. Eighteen year old is to me it's it's some somewhat unknown, but it's a kind of rare gem within Lefroy because as soon as people taste this one, they just mm -hmm. they completely open up and realise well why haven't I tasted this one before. It is, it is a very special Lefroy. It's, it's a very smooth Lefroy. With older Lefroigs, you tend to get the cask oils coming in and they separate out the flavours. So what's going to happen with this one, you're just going to get wave after wave after wave of flavour coming into your mouth and it's, it can be coming hours later with this whisky. It's a very, very lingering whisky. Excellent, it really is. Well, I know that uh, everyone in the room and down the panel are, are, uh, are tasting that. Well, we give them a, ch a chance to um, form their opinion. Another picture that's just coming in at the moment of three ladies who are enjoying their Lefroy somewhere in the world right now, and they've sent their picture in. Thank you very much for the picture. Very illuminating. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and keep carry on enjoying your whiskey. Uh, no, let's go to you next. I know you're, 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 you're in mid-sip there. Um, an 18-year-old? We all act like an 18-year-old from time to time, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Come on, act like an 18-year-old. Yeah. I don't care. Act, act like a man, care. you mean. Yeah, no, of course. No, no, no. Uh, it's... Um, <laughs> do you know what I think about the whiskey? Uh, yeah. Well, if, if you want, I, I want to I know what you think about anything. Yeah, OK. So what I think about <laughs> this one, <laughs> it, um, it smells banana and chocolate, smoky, and it's, it's very... It smells really great. And when you taste it, it's... Uh, yeah, it's different stuff. It's like sweet, but it's a bit like citrus, um, yep. lemon, citrus, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> citrus. What is citrus? Yep. Citrus. Yep. Yeah, uh, it's it's really good. Mm -hmm. It's very lingering. It coats the whole of your mouth with flavour, and it just keeps coming back up wave after wave. I got a lot of banana in this one as well now, and it's it's like kind of like banana loaf for me. That I get maybe not getting banana loaf, but very chocolatey in the palate as well. Love it.
Love it a bit. Yes, that yes, means I was on, right. You were right. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, you've got a pilot. You've got a pilot. <laughs> People in Sweden know you very well from, from TV and being a comedian. Um, how would you describe yourself to the rest of the world that are watching now? How would you describe yourself? Oh, my God. Uh, Come on. Yeah, spicy and sweet, what you said. <laughs> that, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, but I lo also like whiskey. I met Håkan through whiskey. We got a scholarship. You call yep. that? Yeah, uh -huh. a whiskey scholarship. What a great scholarship <laughs> to I get. I know, I know. <laughs> Where's and the school? Let me sign up. Yeah. So, uh, it's great. It's a, it's a tiny word in Sweden, world in Sweden, but it's still a it's great one. And you, you meet your... Okay, we're going to move friends. down to the man in the tartan as well. What do you make of this? Uh, I think it's... Uh, I, I have tasted it before, of course, but, mm. but I, I think the 18-year-olds the is what uh, Lafroy stands for. Mm -hmm. I like it. it it's, uh, everyone knows it. Um, and um, the, the gentle smoke and, 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 uh, and uh, the fruitness is real great. I think everyone loves it. Yeah, no, I've been going around. This is my fifth different town or city in the last five days of Sweden. It's definitely been the favourite at every yeah. tasting. Uh, yeah. oh, the most favourite whiskey yeah. at mm. the tasting yeah, of course. Yeah. I wanted to go down the panel and ask that. So for you, it's, it, 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 it's, your, it's your favourite, yeah? Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. It's your favourite. The 18-year-old, your favourite. No, for you, which one is your favourite? Uh, the four ones we tried. Uh-huh. Um, I, I think I like the second one best. The, the um, it's this the one, right? Yeah. yeah. The Karchis, yeah. Karchis for you. Uh, Pete, what for you? I, for different purposes, uh, I, I would mm -hmm. say this is the gentle lady on the top of the sail of, of, of the range here. It's, um, it's complex that takes away the, the smokiness, the peatness a little bit and, and, and so to say, uh, balance that up very good. Uh, so this is very sophisticated. But uh, on the golf course, I would go for the cathedrals as well. Okay, John, what's your <laughs> favourite expression? It's like, it's like oh, which one, which no, one no, of your no, children do, do you like yeah, the most? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's like, can't do that. Uh, they're, all, they're all my favourites. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're all your favourites. <laughs> do that. <laughs> they're all <laughs> babies. <laughs> yeah, they're no, all your babies, uh, but which one do you like the most? Come on. Uh, I... Uh, I'm going to be very, it's, it's going to seem very boring, but 10 is just classic Laphroaig to me. I like 10 with a wee drop water in it. Yeah. If you're pushing me, that's where I'm going. All right, Frankie in London, and uh, I think it's uh, uh, Johannesburg as well. Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, another market that you know yep. very well. Uh, they're watching as well, so thank you very much. Now, John, we have got a lot of questions coming in, and mm -hmm. we will get to answer all of those ones that we didn't answer tonight, and we'll do that online in the next week as well and choose our winners best questions as well but there were a lot of questions that were coming in regarding next year i mean it's 2014 and here we are celebrating mm -hmm. it with all these great whiskies 2015 is a huge year the 200th anniversary of lafroy the 21st anniversary of the friends of lafroy um, that sounds like a good excuse if we need one for a party. I'm going to just uh, bring a bottle <laughs> out for you John I don't know if you've seen this but it it's seems, got a question seems mark. Interesting, yeah. A question mark. The mystery <laughs> bottle. What can we expect next year? Uh, lots, hopefully, coming from the distillery. Uh, we will have events planned all throughout the year. Uh, I know people want to get organised for these events as well, so you should be getting something very, very shortly with almost like a timeline of events throughout the year. With that will also be a timeline of whiskies. Uh, it's no secret of what the first whiskey will be launched next year as well. Uh, the word is getting about very, very quickly within the whiskey community that the one of the that bent the question that bent had asked uh -huh. earlier on. Yeah, when we come back to that, yeah. So, 15-year-old will be the first whiskey relaunched almost next year. So it's a one-off exclusive for uh, 2015, where friends of have been asking for a while. Well, what about the 15 versus the 18? We've done lots of tastings at the site. So 15-year-old will become available probably January, February next year, and that will be the first whiskey we taste. The first event will probably be about March or April, and a wee bit of detail to be done in that, but we are planning different things all the way throughout the year. Lots of great whiskies. At least we're thinking maybe six or seven new whiskies next year as well. So... More to come, I guess. But I can't wait for keep, the tasting for that. Six or seven new whiskies, wow. Yep. And also, well, we've got the, the 21st birthday of Friends of Lefroy. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out what kind of 
what age of whiskey we're going to have to celebrate that. Right, yes. Uh, <laughs> so there's, there's clues in what we're kind of doing. And also, obviously, maybe where Lafroy Glaive will be from next year. Might be from a wee island off the west coast of Scotland mm. as a clue. So different, lots of different things, lots of different expectations. Hopefully we'll live up to them because, say, we've got 630,000 people who will tell me <laughs> if I'm doing it wrong as well. So uh, good fun, good whiskies and lots to celebrate next year for the distillery. Excellent. All right, well, we look forward to all of that. That's going to be quite something. A shout out for those in Slovenia who are watching us as well. Thank you very much indeed <laughs> for, for doing so. Just been told about that. And uh, Maisie's questions were all answered and wrapped up very nicely in what you've just said about <laughs> what's coming up next year. We are unbelievably so close to running out of time. We will get all of the answers to all of the questions you've been sending up and some of the other pictures that you've been sending as well. We'll try and include them. Um, I have to, at this time, thank our panel. Would you join me in putting your hands together for our fantastic panel? Shout out to John and Madeline, who wanted a name check very, very quickly while we're doing our thank yous. <laughs> thank you to our fantastic host right here at The Smoker as well. Haven't they done a great job with the food? Yep. Thank you, John. Yep. And we've also got, uh, of course, all of those who are joining us from all of us in here. Thank you to all of those people around the world who are watching us. Uh, we want you to know that we're having the best of times here, and we hope you are as well. <laughs> so thank you very much, all those around the world. John in Switzerland says hi as well. And, uh, and, of course, to our audience right here, you should give yourselves a round of applause because you've done really good as well. Thank you very much. Well, from here live in Sweden, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We sincerely look forward to you joining us next year for the 200th anniversary, which is going to be quite something. I think you can probably guess where it's going to be. But from everyone here, I think you rightly say here, skull. <laughs>